Fan Showdown, Season 7, Episode 1. We're back, and today, you know, we're going to start a new season of the Fan Showdown with new design considerations, new testing methodologies. It's going to be a bit different, and I'm, I'm interested to know what you guys think <laughs> in the comments down below. If, you, if you've watched the Fan Showdown series in the past, you know that we've always concentrated on what you can do with a single A12 X25. Can you make it either better? Can you make it just look cooler? I guess in some cases people made them worse. There was a guy last season when we were doing static pressure testing where the goal was to make it perform the highest static pressure possible. I designed a fan to pull a vacuum. So that was, that was based and something we all didn't expect. But this season, we're definitely gonna switch it up. We're going kind of back to, back to the old days, kind of back to the, the standard just cooling a CPU. And then we're also changing how we're judging things. So it's changing quite a bit. First change is instead of just having access to one A12X25, you now can use up to two A12X25s in your design. The reason being is uh, we're cooling a CPU again with the U12A cooler from Noctua. And we've kind of done CPU cooling before, but it was always with one fan. This time around, you can do push-pull. You can do, I mean, you can do whatever you want. You can make a crazy, con crazy contraption that just uses two fans of power. It, it, there's kind of no rules. As long as it fits on there, we'll, we'll test it. In addition to that, I was thinking a lot about how we normally score these fans. And normally we've been, you know, it's, when we did CPU cooling last time, it was whoever had the lowest C CPU temperature, they were the best fan. Uh, we did static pressure, we've done a, a lot of different things. However, I've seen a lot of people in the comments saying that we should put more emphasis on the noise, the noise output of a fan. We've always, I've always measured the noise output and profile just to kind of give a nice data point so we can kind of see how each fan sounds and how loud it is and what frequency band. This year, I think we're gonna go a little bit more in depth. That's gonna actually count. In season seven, to find out which fan is actually performing the best, we're going to measure, yes, the CPU temperature. We're gonna run the fans on this cooler for 20 minutes or so until this you know, levels out at whatever temperature the CPU is gonna run at. This is a 7700K, it's an old CPU, but it just needs to make heat. It runs at 4.9 gigahertz. And then that number in Celsius, um, and then we're also gonna take the room temperature because it changes down here. Not like a, this isn't like a scientific environment. We're gonna take the, the temperature, the CPU temperature, the room temperature, and then we're gonna get the Delta T and that is gonna be the score for the performance testing. In addition to that, we're gonna make, we're gonna again take the sound readings like we always have. And we're gonna take that number as well into consideration for the score. So lower the CPU temperature, the better the score. And obviously the lower the noise output, the better the score. So what we're gonna do is take those two values, add them together, and that will be the score of the fan for the video. So a fan with a low CPU temperature and a really high noise output, it's not gonna score as good as a fan with maybe a slightly higher CPU temperature, but a much lower noise uh, reading. And I think that's a pretty level-headed way of kind of getting the best of both worlds. I will be pretty interested to see what you guys think in the comments down below. If you think this is a good idea, if you're happy to see this, if you think it's a bad idea, just let me know in the comments. We can make slight adjustments before we get to episode two. But I think that this will give a more rounded, I don't know, opinion or a idea of which fan is actually performing the better. And maybe we can use that, you know, we can use that noise output level that we've always measured and looked at and listened to as an actual useful data point. Now looking through the submissions so far this season, I've noted a lot of people are playing it safe right out of the gate. Uh, probably a lot of people have fans that they've submitted in the past and they just want to you know, get them into season seven. So I've seen a lot of just single fans that if you send a single fan to this season, I'll just print it twice and it'll just run in a push-pull configuration um, as long as it fits on the, the fan frame. So here's an example, this will, just, this will fit both sides of the fan. Um, not a lot of outside the box thinking just yet, but there, there was a few. First up for season seven is Myobiobi. Myobiobi and his fan Mango Knife. Now the best way I can find to describe the Mango Knife is uh, sophisticated. Every surface, every intersection is contoured. They're all filleted. It looks nice and smooth, like it was planned for. It's kind of weird to say. He designed it, so obviously he planned for it. But when I saw this design, the first thing I thought of was the X67 Moonbat. The Moonbat was a pretty radical aircraft for the day. It was in the 40s around World War II or just, you know, the late stages of the war. Uh, it was made by McDonald Aircraft in response to the Army Air Corps' request for proposal R-40C, which was for a high altitude, high speed, long range interceptor with the goal of destroying bombers. And back then that was a pretty big ask. 
and this futuristic design was put together to achieve those targets or try to get as close as possible. The XP67, I think is pretty interesting. It was like a laminar flow design back in the 40s, which gave it this unique plan view when compared to other aircrafts of the era. You probably don't even know about the XP67. It never really lived up to expectations. It did fly, not the best, and it was greatly underpowered from what it was supposed to be. This was an era before computational fluid dynamics, so this was a pretty radical design for the day. And to, to test those designs to see if they worked, you just had to put a dude in it and hope that it flew. Now, my Obi Obi didn't say that this aircraft was obviously the inspiration for his fan. He did, though, point to specific aspects of his fan and the thought process behind creating those. For example, the intersection of each blade is designed with this radial compressor air movement outwards. The, the idea is to kind of form these blades like a radial compressor to move that air away from, from the hub. The outer part of the wing is a straight fronted wing to maximize airflow and the hub of the blade is fully filleted to maximize you know, the airflow around the hub to make the air intake you know, better, as good as possible. Now next up we have Raimondes. Raimondes. Raimondes? And his fan, 30 fin. Now 30 fin is exactly what it sounds like. It's a fan comprised of 30 really thin blades. The fan is actually composed in sections, so you got an upper and a lower section, and then they kind of key together and fit over the fan frame itself. So that means uh, I printed four of these guys, two tops, two bottoms for each fan. So that means we got a blade count of 60. Armando said he didn't know if this is a good idea or a bad idea for this specific testing, but he thought the idea uh, looked cool and he said it was worth a try and I do agree. I mean, everybody likes high blade count fans, even though sometimes they don't really perform the best. Now the third fan of the day is Court and his fan Humpback. The Humpback is comprised of 12 blades, six long ones, six short ones, and the idea was to increase static pressure near the hub with all 12 blades and then maximize airflow out towards the fan frame with just the six longer blades. It's an interesting idea. I'm interested in how this would have performed in the static pressure test, but they're cooler time. Now along the top, protruding through the fan blade to the bottom surface, so you kind of have these two lobes, top and bottom of some of the blades on this fan are tubercles. Well, they're inspired by tubercles, the ones found on like humpback whales that give their blade or their fins better efficiency. And Court is hoping that that will kind of play an effect on his fan as well. In addition to that, on the back side of the fan on the, the hub are these little, I don't know, teeth looking thing. He calls them turbo teeth. He said that they were actually a happy accident. The initial model that he made had these weird artifacts around the hub and then he said rather than just cut them away he decided why not why not do something with them maybe they'll help perform help performance in some way he thought they looked pretty cool so got that as well now thus far all these fans have been pretty tame they're kind of just normal fans printed twice using a push-pull configuration which is acceptable i mean that is that is an easy way to do it that's a good way to do it it's what noctua does it obviously works but this last one steps a little bit outside the box which i do appreciate because the funnier the fan the goofier it is the cooler it looks the better this is jagson i'll we'll just call him jag and his fan inside out now he didn't call the fan inside out he just i didn't call it anything he just had like the files named like m and f uh, but I thought Inside Out was a much more appropriate <laughs> name for this fan. And because they're two vastly different fans, they actually have different RPM readings based on which fan well, we're measuring. Obviously the bigger one spins slower and the little one spins faster. But how exactly are these supposed to interact? Well, that's what I think is interesting. The large fan is obviously responsible for the air on the outside towards the edge of the fan frame. And the little fan is designed to nest directly in the middle of it and provide airflow through the hub area. Jag said that he actually made this design and submitted it two years ago, but when he saw season seven start and we were allowed to use two fans now, he thought that this time was perfect to resubmit it because back then you couldn't use two fans, but now you can. And I'm sure glad he resubmitted it. And as you can see, you got green and you got orange and they just go together like this. And the blades actually have different pitch. They are designed to spin in the opposite direction. So this is kind of like a brand new take on Contra rotating propellers where they do, they, they rotate in opposite directions, but also within each other. Uh, I'm sure that it will sound interesting, given we all know that contra-rotating propellers and aircraft are quite loud. I wonder how this will be, because now they're not really set up back to back, they're set up within each other, but you gotta imagine there's some sort of turbulence going on around the edges or the, the, the tips of these blades. It's gonna be interesting. In the sound test, the inside out came in around 60.4 dBA. The mango knife came in around 56.4. The 30 fins, 53.4. 
and the Humpback 52. And yeah, the inside out was pretty, pretty loud. It sounded, I mean, it was loud, but it sounded interesting. All of these fans were pretty loud. And now that we have two kind of running in the sound test, obviously this one is made it together and run as it's designed. The other ones that are just push pull those. So how I did it was I put them both kind of separated by the, the cooler width on a piece of foam to isolate them from the table and just ran them like that. I thought that was kind of like the best way to do it. I'd be interested to know if you guys think the same, if we should run the sound test with these on the cooler, since now that we're actually using that metric to measure something. But for now, they're just ran on the table, separated by how they would normally be separated. We're just listening to them like that. got a new smoke tester not because i wanted to because the old one broke which i didn't even know was possible the halloween smoke machine died it happens you just it just had too many hours on it i guess and it died so i decided to get a handheld one it's another thing it changed let me know how you think about that as well in the performance testing the inside out produced a cpu temperature of 74 degrees celsius at a room temperature of 20.77 giving us a delta t of 53.23 the Mango Knife produced a CPU temperature of 71 degrees Celsius at a room temperature of 20.5 degrees Celsius, giving us a Delta T of 50.5. The 30 Fin produced a CPU temperature of 73 at a room temperature of 20.5, giving us a Delta T of 52.5. And the Humpback produced a CPU temperature of 75 at a room temperature of 20.5, giving us a Delta T of 54.5. Now what this means is, in season seven, is that the Mango Knife would normally be the overall winner because it performed the best in the cooling test or in the thermal testing. But with this new factor being acoustic, that's not the case. The 30 fin actually comes in first place with a score of 105.9. The humpback then gets second with a score of 106.5. The mango knife is actually in third place with a score of 106.9 and the inside out gets a score of 113.63. So it kind of changed, it changed a lot there. So those are the four fans of season seven with a lot of changes made to the fan showdown in just one season. And I'm interested to know what you guys think about it. Let me know in the comments section down below. We'll be reading them. And if there's anything blatantly wrong or something that could be a problem, we'll change it before season two and rerun these guys. But for the most part, I think this is going to shape up to be pretty interesting. If you want to get in on the action, obviously get subscribed to the channel. Uh, and check out the description below. There's um, a lot of information on what you need to do to make sure your fan fits in the frame of the A12X25. I now have a better model of the CPU cooler from our box thing that I did. I'll put that on my Thingiverse so you can download that. The only thing you really need to make sure of is that you clear the IO plate and this single stick of RAM. I'll probably get something a little shorter from here so it gives you a little more wiggle room. And yeah, there's some reference models you can download to help you kind of figure out how you want to design your fan and it should be a lot of fun. So thank you for all, thank you all for watching. I'm going to get started printing some new ones for season two, for episode two. I'm, I'm, season seven, episode two. So next time.